Welcome back to Derivability. Uh, here we're going to take a look at uh, some kinematics of rigid body motion. Okay, this would be appropriate for a uh, you know sophomore junior course in uh, mechanical engineering, uh, possibly physics. Okay, so uh, let's uh, first talk about relative motion. All right, uh, let's use the notation that I've got shown here. Uh, R subscript PQ, just using some generic subscripts. Uh, let's suppose this is the position vector of some point P or object P relative to some other point or maybe object Q. Okay, uh, so when we be using P and Q, uh, th that's just kind of some generic stand ins. Uh, maybe mostly I'll be using um, A and B. Okay, so let's suppose I've got a couple of points in this xy plane, maybe an origin O, and um, often you'll see this used as a, as a, as a fixed point. Uh, I like to call it an outside fixed origin, okay, outside of any of the other points involved. Okay, maybe I've got some point here A, and uh, some other point B, okay, and uh, I'm sure you know that we can talk about uh, the, the vectors connecting uh, pairs of these points. Okay, so we can talk about this vector. That's the vector of um, position vector of A relative to O. Okay, we can also talk about the position of B relative to O. And let's just say we uh, are interested in the position of B relative to A. Okay, so let me write, uh, write some of these down here using the notational scheme that we've already established here. So that would be R sub B A, kind of final point first and the initial point second. Okay, here this would be R sub B O. R sub A O. Okay, maybe you're wondering why I'm using this little cursive y looking notation for O, uh, like O for origin. Uh, I just don't want it to look like a zero. Okay, so that, that's one way you can do that. Okay, all right, now if you use some tip to tail uh, vector addition here, uh, I think what, what uh, you might notice here is that R sub B O is the same thing as R sub B A plus R sub A O. Okay, now that might be maybe a little backwards from like the tip to tail order that you're thinking about. Maybe you're thinking about drawing A O first followed by B A. Certainly that's, um, that's legitimate. Okay, but the way I want to think about this notation is that if, if you're measuring B with respect to O, Notice on the right hand side, we can kind of link up uh, some of these subscripts uh, on both the left and right sides. B is the first subscript, O is the last subscript, and then the, those two points are linked by some intermediate in between point A in this case. Okay, uh, So I find this notational scheme to be very, very helpful. Um, I, I hope you do too. There's, there's, it's not the only way to do it. There, there are other ways to do this, but this is, this is how I like doing it. All right. Now, if, if these points are moving, then what we can do is we can take the rate of change of both sides, basically the, the time derivative, okay, and these positions become velocities. So velocity BO equals velocity BA plus velocity AO. Okay, and as you might suspect, we can do this again. And these velocities become accelerations. All right, okay, probably no big surprise there. Uh, same notational scheme, all right? Um, but we're just using um, velocities and accelerations. Okay. Now this is going to be true um, whether you have a rigid body or not. Okay. 
Uh, but what I want to imagine now is that A and B are points in the same rigid body. All right. And that, that's really going to get the, the, the rest of this discussion going. All right, now taking a look at this, uh, you can see I've, I've changed a few things here. I left a few things from, from the previous screen a minute ago. Okay, but uh, I, what I've done is I've, I've just drawn a red uh, curve, closed curve around points A and B. Okay, this representing my rigid body. And uh, let's suppose my rigid body could have uh, some rotational properties, uh, kinematic properties, uh, omega uh, for angular velocity and alpha for angular acceleration. Okay, so let's suppose that, that we are talking about planar rotations. Okay, and uh, the kinematics of, of the pla this planar rigid body motion. Okay, if the x and y axes here are in the plane, uh, then the z-axis would, would point, be pointing out of the screen right at you. Okay, and we can think of omega as a vector as being its magnitude times our z unit vector, k, and then ditto for alpha, like that. Okay, now the thing about this body being rigid is that uh, a and b are always at some fixed distance relative to each other. Okay, that's if, if, if you want to consider anything else, uh, hopefully you can convince yourself that this object is not a rigid object, not a rigid body. So the only sort of, sort of motion that A or B could have relative to each other is this rotational motion. Okay. All right. So uh, this R sub B A, uh, it, right, that I have written right here, that could change with time, but only in a rotational sense. Okay, so when I get to writing velocity B O, okay, like I had before, well, uh, as as we had written before, equals velocity B A plus velocity A O. Okay, now A could have whatever sort of motion with respect to O. Okay, but B can only have rotational motion with respect to A. Now, just to simplify the, the discussion for a moment, let's suppose that A and B are points on a disk, a rotating disk. Okay, it doesn't have to be, but I think that just kind of eases the discussion here. So let's suppose I have a rotating disk that has an angular velocity, as I've, as I've discussed here. Okay, now it is not difficult to imagine the tangential velocity of B with respect to A, like that. Okay. Now we all know from, um, from introductory uh, kinematics, uh, like first semester physics, that in terms of the magnitudes here, V is equal to R omega. Okay. Now what about the directions? Well we know that V sub BA is going to be perpendicular to R sub BA. Okay, so I am going to claim that V sub BA is omega cross R sub BA. Okay, and you might be wondering, well, what's the proof for this? Okay, well, uh, first, I, I really the proof is not going to feel like it's very proofy, but I, I'm just going to ask you to, to observe this, that uh, if I take the magnitude of both sides of this cross product, I will indeed get V equals R omega. Okay, uh, omega in this picture is, is pointing out of the board, out of the screen. It's perpendicular to R. So the magnitude of V is going to equal the magnitude of omega times the magnitude of R. Okay, so we know that's right. Next, let's just, let's just see if the directions are correct using our right-hand rule for cross products. So omega is going to point out of the screen right here. Sometimes we draw uh, circles 
with dots in, inside to represent vectors that point out of the board or out of the screen in three dimensions. So if you do use your right hand rule and do omega cross r, uh, your thumb really does give the correct direction for b. I'm sorry, for v sub b a at point b. All right, so the equation that we're really looking for here, v sub b o equals, okay, v sub b a, I'm just gonna replace with this cross product, omega cross r sub b a, and then plus v sub a o. Okay, and that is one of the main products here, the main one of the main goals of um, this video is to derive uh, this formula. Okay, so in other words, if you know the motion or at least the velocity of a with respect to o, and you know the position vector of b with respect to a, and you know the rotational property omega. With of the rigid body, then uh, this formula gives you a way of calculating the velocity of point B with respect to O. Okay. Now, sometimes well, yeah, there are times we might use this to solve for omega, in, in certain cases. But th the point is that you, you might be able to solve for several different things in, in, in a given problem. Okay. All right. Now, our next chore is to do the same thing with acceleration, okay? And I think that the lesson here, it's, it's really not kind of a, a, a far cry, okay, uh, to, to make the claim at this point, is that when you have a rotation, just a pure rotation, the time derivative of some vector, I'll just call that capital A generically, is equal to the angular velocity vector cross that vector A. Okay, and, and when we're talking about the relative motion, say of point B with respect to A, we, we are talking about a pure rotation. Okay, so let's take a time derivative of this velocity formula to obtain acceleration, okay? There's one more thing I should add here. Sometimes there really is a time dependence in addition to, to the rotation, okay? So when we take the time derivative of this boxed equation here to get acceleration, well, there, there's going to be the time dependence of omega. In other words, its derivative is alpha but there's also going to be the fact that this thing is rotating. Okay, so let's proceed with, with that. Okay, so the time derivative of velocity BO is acceleration BO. Okay, then I have a time derivative of omega cross RBA plus a time derivative of velocity AO, which is acceleration AO, okay? But because we have a product, we have to use a product rule, okay? Um, let me create some more space on this screen. Okay, there we go. So let's continue with this, uh, this derivative taking process. So I have acceleration BO equals, okay, now I want to apply the time derivative to omega, and, and that gives me alpha cross R sub BA, okay, but otherwise, let me apply the derivative taking process to R sub BA, and that's where I get an extra omega cross. Okay, so this is an example of, of having two cross products. Sometimes we call it a triple product because it involves three vectors. Okay, then we still have acceleration AO at the end. Now, even though we were, we were talking purely about planar rotations here, this is general. Okay, now if you indeed have planar rotations, 
okay, which is, which is almost always how you start off studying this, then omega we can write as omega k hat vector. And then r sub b a, okay, let me just say this, it's, it's in the xy plane. So if I wanted to write that in terms of components and unit vectors, it, it, it would only it, it would have i j unit vectors, but no k. Okay. All right. Now we can simplify this arrangement, omega cross omega cross r b a. We can simplify this using something called the back cab rule from vector analysis. Okay. And that says if we have three vectors, capital A, B, and C, and we take A cross the grouping B cross C, we get B times the scalar multiple dot product, A dot C minus C, whose scalar multiple here is the dot product A dot B. Maybe you can see now why it's called the back cab rule. Okay, at least that's that's one way we have of writing it. Okay, now in our case we have omega cross omega cross r. Okay, it's not really necessary to put the subscripts on r. Okay, well the role of b is being played by omega, and then a dot c that's omega dot r. Okay, and then minus c. Okay, that role is being played by r. And then I have omega dot omega. All right, well, because we have planar rotations, the omega vector has a k hat vector on it. R sub b a is going to have only i and j vectors. So the omega dot r dot product is going to be zero because those vectors are perpendicular to each other. Okay, omega dot omega is a scalar. We can just write that as omega squared. So for planar rotations, we can say acceleration BO equals alpha cross R sub BA. And then this item that's underlined in red, we can just replace uh, that, in this case, that triple product with simply minus omega squared times R sub BA. And then finally, plus a sub a o. Okay, uh, just a little little interpretation of things here. Um, alpha cross r sub b a. This is what we call the tangential acceleration. And then omega squared times r sub b a. Sometimes this goes by the name of the normal acceleration. You might know it better as the centripetal acceleration. Okay. Okay, so this is either one of these is is really the second uh, product of, of uh, our work today. This is to come up with a formula for the acceleration. Okay. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful and uh, enlightening. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end here. Uh, hopefully this can be applied to some things you're learning. Uh, during uh, the present uh, term at your school. Uh, maybe just like learning this sort of stuff for fun. Uh, either way, I'm glad that you stopped by. Uh, please leave me some comments. Um, uh, subscribe. Um, like, share the video. If you have some friends studying this sort of thing. Um, hang in there, and uh, we'll see you next time around.